As you look at your goals and dreams, and, and I want you to expand them, and, and it's very important to realize that I, I found that most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they did just like I did for so many years. They aimed too low and hit. They didn't believe in themselves. So I want you right now, as we begin to think about the lessons and all the things that you've experienced and all of the comments and stories and strategies and lessons that you've had, I think it's time to revisit and look at your goals and dreams and let's raise the bar. I remember as a kid, we would be in the backyard and, and we would play jump and somebody would get on one side of the stick, my sister and then my brother, we would run and we'd jump over it. And then they say, raise it up a little bit higher. We have to back up and we run and we'd jump over it again. And then we say, raise it up a little higher. And the higher it, it got, we had to begin to change our approach and how we we're going to get over the bar. And that's the same thing in life. And so right now, I want you to think about your goals and dreams as you begin to raise them a little higher. And I want you to say with me, it's possible. It's possible. You know, the easiest thing that I do is speak and train people how to speak. Go into prisons and juvenile detention centers and to high schools and colleges. Speak before thousands of people. I can do that in my sleep. Let me share with you the, the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And it took me years to do. And that was to believe that it was possible. To believe that I can do it. Given my circumstances, born in an abandoned building on a floor, being adopted, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, failing twice in school, no college training, never worked for a major corporation. To believe that I had something of value to say somebody would want to listen to me, to believe that, that somebody would pay me to talk to them. Have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? I, I remember going to see Zig Ziglar, who I consider the number one motivational speaker on the planet, and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale when he was alive, and Robert Shuler. I, I used to see them and I would be so pumped up and inspired after hearing Jim Rohn, who recently passed, one of the great motivational speakers of all time, and, and Charlie Tremendous Jones, and, and I, I would go to my car pumped up, saying, yes, yes, yes I can. And then after a while, my mental condition would kick in. And I'd say, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. Oh, you know who your parents are. That's fine. You can't do that. You failed twice in school. Oh. Ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? There's a proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. That's why it's important that you make it a point every day to review these lessons, to, to get them deep, not only in the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind, and get them in your spirit. Well, how often should I do it? Do it until you are producing the results. That's how often you should do it. And, and you never stop. Because once you stop, that's when those negative thoughts will come back. Once you stop, that's when you will begin to doubt yourself. Once you stop, I'm telling you what I know. Yes. Every day, it's a selling job on you. It's possible. I can do this, I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. It's possible. Yes, your dream is possible. Say that to yourself every day. Feed your mind with words that you write and words that you hear and words that you speak to yourself. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. Say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Even when you have no evidence to point to, say to yourself, it's possible. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. It's a struggle sometimes to do that, especially when you have people around you telling you that it's not possible, that you can't do it. And they're constantly pointing out your failures of the past, constantly reminding you of all of the things that you don't have going for you. I'm reminded of the story of the two little boys that were playing on, on some ice during the winter. And, and, and as they got further out on this ice, one fell through the, the thin ice and, 
And so the little fellow that was still on top of the, the ice, he was trying to save his, his little buddy. And he couldn't reach him, he was trying to pull him. He could see him through the thin ice as he got further away from him, struggling. And, and he couldn't reach him and he's trying to break the ice and he couldn't do it and he looked around and he saw a tree in the distance and he ran and, and he got up on the tree and, 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 and he pulled and broke down an enormous sized branch and came back and, and savagely began to beat that ice and broke it and, and miraculously he saved his friend. And when the paramedics came and they were able to revive this little boy they were scratching their heads, they're trying to figure this out, said, how, how could this little pruny fellow go up in a tree and break off a branch this size and then come back and beat and break the ice and save his friend? They thought it was just miraculous, it was baffling. And an old guy who was there said, I can tell you how he did it. And they said, how? How do you do it? And he said, there was no one here to tell him. What could you do? What could I do? What could all of us do if we did not have the naysayers in our lives? That, that, that we believe naively like that little boy, that it was possible. What would you do if, if, if failure was not on the table? Do you realize that 87% of people allow the fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed because they've been convinced by the evidence, by being practical, by being logical, by being realistic. I did that. Leslie, yes. You're going to speak for corporations, yes. Leslie, do they have a college education? Yes. Do you? Wesley, you know that I don't have a college education. Leslie, are these people experienced? Yes. Are there people with PhDs and MBAs that they could choose? rather than choose you yes so you don't have a college education you have no experience you're talking about becoming a speaker and they're going to reach over people with phds and mbas and years of experience and choose you are you being realistic come on leslie come on leslie you can't do this my, my brother he is he's a wonderful person and, and, and he constantly reminded me that I, I couldn't do what I'm doing now. And, but that really wasn't the bad part. The real bad part was, I convinced myself that I couldn't do it. Not only because of those things that he pointed out, being practical and realistic, but also that within myself, I didn't believe what Mike Williams, my mentor, said was possible for me. Have you ever had somebody who believed and saw something for you that you didn't see for yourself? And here's how I escaped that. I discovered that sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. So here's what I am believing for you. The goals that you right now have, the things that you have envisioned for yourself, this is a reflection, what you've done thus far and what you are engaged in doing. It's what's possible for you right now, but there's even more. You don't even know what's in the future. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. If you believe in yourself, if you constantly remind yourself after every defeat, after every setback, every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. What's very important is you. You're believing in yourself. You're constantly saying, somehow, some way, I'm going to make it. I remember a lady out of Detroit, Michigan. They call her Martha Jean the Queen. And she had a motivational message she gave all the time on the radio. And the question she would ask was, do you really want to win? Hmm. Do you really want to win? And she said, if you really want to win in life, you've got to believe in yourself. But no one else does. You've got to believe in yourself. See, it's easy to believe in yourself and to have faith 
if you have a good bill of health, if your relationship is working out fine, if you have money in the bank, if you have a secure job, if your mortgage note is paid current, if the children are acting like they have good sense. <laughs> it just, it's easy. If you go to a doctor, they say, oh, you're doing real good, I'll see you next year. It's easy to have faith then. Let, let me tell you when, when it's really tough to have faith. When you lose your job, when you lose your retirement, when you go to the doctor and they look at you and say, you have cancer. Cancer is the most feared word in seven different languages. That's when it's tough to have faith then. And that's when you need to call on your faith then. They said faith is the oil that, that takes the friction out of living. That's when you need to believe in yourself then and judge not according to appearances and say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. I can make it. It's possible. I'm going to get through this. It's possible. I'm not going to allow this to get the best of me. Yeah. I don't know what you're up against. I don't know what you're facing, but here's what I do know. You've got something special. You've got greatness in you. And I know it's possible that you can live your dream.